Welcome to the day 3 of WCC ICC TV presented by MK Pharmaceuticals and you are watching us on the rightdoctors.com. I am honored to have with me the legend, uh, the, the cardiologist from Pune, uh, Dr. M. S. Hiremad sir. Sir is the director for Cathlab Ruby Hall Clinic Pune. So welcome to the show sir. Uh, we all know that whenever the patient comes uh, with uh, coronary artery disease and uh, the decision has been taken to ship the patient to the cath lab, uh, there are various expectations from the family, there are some expectations from the patient as well and they just think that uh, my patient is inside the cath lab, now everything will be fine. But however, there are some challenges. So to discuss this uh, in more detail, uh, Dr. M. S. Hiremar sir will just throw a light on various challenges and how to overcome that. So, sir, I would like to begin. Uh, what are these uh, challenges? Actually, it's an uh, area, cath lab, is uh, so crucial that uh, many times all the other tests are done, small mm -hmm. as well as big, and then the patient is up with you in the cath lab. Mm -hmm. So, everybody is waiting very expectantly. Mm -hmm. What is the result of an angiogram? What is the doctor going to tell us? Mm -hmm. What is going to be the next step? Mm -hmm. So all these uh, are becoming very, very crucial. Mm -hmm. Patient is extremely happy if angiogram comes normal. Right. But this is just about 7 or 8 percent of our practice. Mm -hmm. Most of them would have some kind of lesion which we need to talk about. Right. So once uh, you find a coronary disease, mm -hmm. uh, we have to sort of tell them either they belong to the medical treatment group, mm -hmm. some of them would need angioplasty, right. while some who have advanced disease uh, mm -hmm. would probably need a bypass surgery. Mm -hmm. So those who have advanced disease uh, cannot be managed with angioplasty, they are the ones mm -hmm. uh, who, which bring them out from the cath lab, mm -hmm. discuss with the family mm -hmm. that surgery is a better option. Sometimes there is a kind of a hard team approach. Mm -hmm. where I along with my surgical colleague along with our anesthesia colleague we discuss with the family mm -hmm. as to what is going to be the correct future option. Mm -hmm. So we are not talking of just short term saving them from the current scene but we are also mm -hmm. talking of long term mm -hmm. five years from now or ten years from now how are they going to get better. Mm -hmm. So this is where a lot of thinking goes in. Mm -hmm. And then we have uh, studies like Syntax earlier mm -hmm. and now Axel, mm -hmm. uh, Nobel. So these kind of studies sort of guide you to make a decision. Mm -hmm. More importantly, uh, cases uh, which uh, where we do an angiogram and they, they need a procedure, mm -hmm. uh, they become important. We have differentiation like type A lesion, which are simple lesion, mm -hmm. just uh, do another half an hour job and mm -hmm. patient is absolutely fine okay. with an angioplasty. But those uh, garden variety angioplasty mm -hmm. are uh, very few in percentage, especially mm -hmm. if you are into a tertiary center and if you are more experienced, you tend to get more and more complex work. Mm -hmm. So here we face uh, a lot of challenges. Mm -hmm. To give you an example, mm -hmm. say acute infarction in a young individual, many times uh, uh, we have cases where we have lysed the patient mm -hmm. intracoronary. So many times we use uh, GP blockers intracoronary and we aspirate the thrombus, mm -hmm. don't use balloon, don't use stent and a few days from now put them on, on anticoagulation and you mm -hmm. find mm -hmm. that the coronaries are nice and clean. Mm -hmm. So there you have avoided the procedure completely. Mm -hmm. However, this needs experience to or, and wisdom too mm -hmm. to decide that this patient can be managed with mm -hmm. just lytics. In contrast, most of the time when we are doing a procedure, we are actually talking of uh, putting a stent. Mm -hmm. And at times uh, there could be complex lesion, like you have a left main, uh, then there is a surgery as an option. Mm -hmm. So we have to discuss with them whether angioplasty can give you an equally long duration benefit. Mm -hmm. Doing angioplasty also sometimes could be challenging. Mm -hmm. Most of the time we work close to about 99, 99.5% success chance. Mm -hmm. However, there are areas where you need to sort of explain to the family that mm -hmm. yes, we are doing it. Mm -hmm. However, this would be the risk issue. Right. This becomes ever so important when you are dealing with cases uh, who are post bypass. Mm -hmm. They already have had a major procedure. Mm -hmm. Now you're trying to sort of uh, uh, make the same bypass work with mm -hmm. an additional uh, support, mm -hmm. uh, so to say, with all kind of medication that you know to prevent coronary disease progression, mm -hmm. as well as angioplasty. Okay. 
Okay. And this is where suppose the left system is uh, bypass grafts are functioning mm -hmm. and yet there is a blockage in the right system which needs to be addressed and we do an angioplasty to that particular branch. So many times uh, the vein grafts which are placed mm -hmm. in bypass surgery they need stenting mm -hmm. and vein graft is a totally different ball game. It's mm -hmm. not same as a native vessel angioplasty. Right. So again we have to tell them that what are the risks are, are mm -hmm. involved in doing a vein graft angioplasty and so on. Mm -hmm. So all these put together, cath lab is a very exciting area mm -hmm. because no two cases are same right, sir. and every case is kind of a learning experience for the operator and based on your experience you sort of tend to progress. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, sir, uh, as far as the decision making is concerned and the expectations from the family and the expectations of the patients are uh, concerned, to what extent the financial uh, part will play a role? It's a big issue. Mm -hmm. uh, however, uh, luckily, you must have read in last two weeks' time, uh, the stand prices have come down substantially. Yes, yeah. uh, it's going to really help uh, many of these individuals. Mm -hmm. We can now manage many cases in the mm -hmm. cath lab, which were previously sent for bypass surgery. Right. And especially those who had a previous, previous bypass, this is going to be a great boon because uh, they are the ones where we don't like to have a second uh, surgery. Mm -hmm. uh, second surgery always carries a big risk. In fact, uh, any repeat procedure, be it be strain, be it be bypass, repeat procedure is never welcome. Mm -hmm. uh, instant restenosis in a stent is mm -hmm. a big disaster. So we mm -hmm. hate, hate to hear a news that somebody has got a stent blockage. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, financial uh, component does play an important role. Luckily, it's getting easier and easier. Mm -hmm. All right, sir. So, sir, uh, most of the time uh, nowadays what is happening is more and more younger patients are mm -hmm. uh, uh, getting uh, STEMI and they are presenting with uh, severe chest pain and uh, uh, the decision is to be taken that uh, patients to be shifted to the for the stenting. So, in that case, is it becoming more really uh, uh, challenging to convince and take the decisions? Actually, the younger individuals, uh, generally uh, the patient himself as with the family, mm -hmm. difficult for them to sort of understand that a 30-year-old otherwise healthy man is, is suddenly into a heart attack situation. Reality is if once you do an ECG, mm -hmm. the diagnosis is very obvious mm -hmm. and you have to face the reality. Right. So it's best that these kind of people understand in first place mm -hmm. that yes, there is a heart attack and mm -hmm. they have to move quickly for a better treatment. Mm -hmm. 2017 treatment of myocardial infarction mm -hmm. remains PAMI. That mm -hmm. means you take the patient to cath lab and do an angioplasty. Mm -hmm. However, in this particular subset mm -hmm. uh, which you are mentioning, young Indian individual, mm -hmm. and mind you, it's almost 7 to 8 percent of the Indian population. Okay. There, the lytic therapy also plays a very important role. Mm -hmm. Lytic success is extremely good. Mm -hmm. In fact, if you lyse them mm -hmm. and bring them to the cath lab next morning, mm -hmm. you would find that, that there is no thrombus, no blockage and mm -hmm. arteries look almost brand new and open. Okay. So this is how you actually save a procedure for a patient. Mm -hmm. So patients presenting early, say mm -hmm. inside one hour, mm -hmm. young, mm -hmm. lytics might emerge as a better modality of treatment mm -hmm. might. Right because it will help you to mm -hmm. dissolve the clot and many of time mm -hmm. the entire MI episode is only because of a fresh thrombus. Mm -hmm. right, sir. So I guess uh, this mm -hmm. pharmacoinvasive approach mm -hmm. like dual ly lysis, mm -hmm. if clot is completely gone and there is no lesion next morning, just stay on medical treatment. Mm -hmm. If there is a blockage, go ahead and do an angioplasty. Mm -hmm. This might emerge as a superior modality for this kind of group that you're talking. Right, sir. So, sir, uh, lastly, um, to all the practitioners and the cardiologists, what will be your key message uh, as far as the effective decision making is concerned in the cath lab? I think uh, uh, if you're alone in the cath lab, so many times it becomes very difficult. Mm -hmm. So, under complex situation, pause, do an angio, let's mm -hmm. discuss all of us together. You know, the transfer of image is so easy these days. Right, sir. So that you can take an opinion of a colleague cardiologist. So always mm -hmm. think together and mm -hmm. then talk to the family what is going to be the best modality. I think uh, 
together wisdom is probably important under complex decision making. Okay. So thank you so much, sir, for such a wonderful discussion, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you.